the speed at which you can manipulate your image is just insane. Bonjour everyone, welcome back to my studio. Today we are going to talk about the new Chroma Warp tool that was released with DaVinci Resolve 20 Beta. It just came out and it is a fantastic tool, let me tell you. The thing I must say, because it actually shocked me, Filmlight Baseline actually created a tool that is called X-Grade and it was released a year and a half ago. Chroma Warp is basically a copy of X-Grade and to have access to Baselight, which is basically another color grading software, to have access to that software, you need to pay thousands of euros a year for a license. And when you pay that premium fee, you have access to some really high end and very well designed and thought tools. Um, that is why you pay premium. The thing is that Resolve copied and basically kind of like stole their um, idea and gave us access to it. It's, it's like literally almost like a one-to-one -one copy of their tool. The tool is quite impressive. So let's have a look. To access the Chroma Warp, you click right here and boom, then you land here. And let's see how crazy that thing is. So when we take a look at the UI, we see that we have a vector scope representation of our color volume. Um, on the left here and we have some controls on the right. So now if I hover my mouse over to the patches of the Macbeth chart right here, you see that there's a little red cross that appears on the Chroma Warp UI, right? So here's my red patch, here's my green patch, you see the little cross moving, here's my yellow patch, cyan patch, etc. okay? So now let's see what happens when I click on the red patch. You see that there's a blue point and a circle around it. And it's basically my source point. And now if I come back on the color warp here and I drag upward, there is a second point, which is a red point and you see a little arrow. So it's basically saying, okay, apply a force on the blue point to move it towards the red point. And you see when you do that, and you drag it upwards like that, it's going to apply more saturation to my red patch. And I can drag it towards, I don't know, towards blue, and my red patch is going to become blue. It's like all of a sudden, I'm a weatherman and I can apply force to um, my color volume and just, I don't know, um, do whatever I want with it. And when you look at the vector scope on the right, you see that, okay, I can literally do whatever I want with it in a super intuitive way. I just love it. It's amazing. Okay. I have a different set of controls now. So there's chroma range right here, which is basically shrinking or extending the width of the force um, that I'm applying. So drag to the right, I'm going to apply a broader adjustment and on the left, a narrow adjustment. So that's for the chroma range. Exposure, it's basically a density control. So if I reduce my exposure, you see that my red patch is becoming denser. So that's before, it's after. You see the red patch, before, after. Let's make it full screen. Before, after, before, after. So I have more color and it's denser. So that's it. that is quite impressive. And you can make it brighter if you want. Okay, before, after, before, after. So that's the exposure. Tonal range low if you drag it to the left, all the way up to the left, it's basically saying, please exclude the 
dimmest regions of my image. And the same goes for tonal range height. If I drag it left, it's going to say, please do not affect the brightest regions of my image. And the pivot just is working the balance between the two regions. On that image, it's going to be difficult to demonstrate. Um, let's have a look later. So let's demonstrate what it actually does. So I'm gonna click on my red patch right here. So you see that I have my source point right here, okay? And if I drag it all the way to blue, you see on my vector scope mass that it's kind of like affecting everything on its way, okay? So it's moving my red patch, as you can see on my scopes, right? but it's also affecting my magenta patch and all that all the way to blue. Now let's say that I were to move to point to point mode and I'm gonna keep that same adjustment and I'm gonna transform it to point to point mode, okay? And see, same adjustment, but point to point mode. Look, look at my vector scope. So that was the normal mode, point to point mode, it's like it's leaving my magenta patch, which is right here. It's leaving it untouched, okay? It's just grabbing my red patch and moving all the way to blue, okay? So that is just a different um, tool uh, within the Chroma Warp tab. It's kind of like keying the reds and pushing a different color into it. I can also pin a region. So let's say that, okay, with a point-to-point -point mode, my magenta patch is being affected, right? Um, so if I click on my magenta patch right here, it's locking that patch and now it's not moving. All right, so, so now you see that that's before, that's after, before, after I put the pin and you see on the vector scope that I'm recovering my magenta patch, all right, position. Uh, you have the little mouse here, which is to kind of like select um, something on the UI and you have the bin here. So if you want to trash, let's say I want to trash that pin, okay, click it and then I hit the little bin icon right here and boom, there you go. I'm going to move to this shot right here. I'm going to apply some contrast and some saturation so that you can so that you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to pop open my chroma warp. All right. Let's say that I want to change the yellow of that car paint to a different hue. Um, so I can click on the car right here. And I can drag it towards let's make it a bit like marigold, for example. Okay, a bit more saturated. Uh, and there you go, so that's before, that's after. Before, after, so, so very intuitively, I was able to grab the color of that car, make it a bit more saturated and warmer. And before that, I'd have to use the um, hue versus hue tool, then the hue versus sat tool, and I would have probably grabbed um, some other parts of the image uh, in the process. So it's a bit more localized and it's like doing everything in, within the same tool. I, I just absolutely love it. And if I wanted to, I don't know, reduce the um, exposure of that color as well, I can do so, right? Obviously, the more extreme the correction you're gonna make, some. Um, artifacts are going to appear but i mean it's just with one tool it's like you can do everything and you can be as targeted as you want i love it so that's for um this shot let's move to different shot let's say i want to um, change the blues of that sky so again i'm going to click on my sky and just i don't know drag it a bit south towards cyan, all right? And again, I wanna densify it slightly. Before, after, before, after, and it's a clean correction. And if I want to make it a bit broader, I can grab my chroma range um, 
and drag it right. My selection is going to be a bit more broader. It's going to affect my windows right here a little bit and it's going to be a bit more organic and clean. So that's before, after, before, after. The speed at which you can manipulate your image is just insane. And guys, if you are not yet subscribed to my Instagram account, you are missing out because I am now sharing breakdowns of some of my professional grades over there and you're gonna see some really cool stuff. So if you're not subscribed yet, take a minute to pause the video and get done with it. Now, let's get back to it. Let's move to this image now. All right, let's say that now I wanted to change the color of that guy's t-shirt, okay? So I'm gonna um, go to point to point mode. I'm gonna click on the purple of this t-shirt and I'm gonna grab it and drag it towards uh, primary red, okay? Because why not? Uh, so that's before, it's after before, after. Obviously I'm grabbing the windows here. Um, the color is quite similar to, uh, quite similar and close to this guy's t-shirt, but you see what I'm getting here. So I can increase the, manipulate the chroma range just a little bit. And um, I mean, very simply, I've changed to a totally different hue that guy's t-shirt can make it a bit denser if I want to. Okay, before, after. And you'd have to watch how clean your adjustment is. So perhaps you'd have to, I don't know, noise reduce it or something like that um, if you're getting some, some chattering. But with an extreme selection like that, I've done it extremely simply in a matter of seconds and before that tool, it would have taken me more time and more complexity, perhaps using a key or different tools. Um, that is very, very impressive. Let's go to this shot. What's funny is that her coat um, has a very interesting color, but let's say that I wanna easily manipulate it towards, I don't know, some pinkish color like that. Let's actually try to make something believable and, and pretty, okay? So, all right. So that's before, that's after. Before, after. And I quite like the results that it's producing. And I think it's actually totally believable. And I've been able to do that very easily. Maybe let's increase exposure a little bit to have a bit more attention on her. Let's say I want less attention on her, the girl with the green uh, jacket. So let's say that, okay, I'm gonna put a pin right here and I'm gonna reduce exposure. I'm gonna increase the chroma range just just yeah trying to add density to the grains and all of a sudden in one node very simply I have added density to my grains and I have changed the color of that girl's coat and also made it brighter in a matter of seconds that is just just crazy and I'm gonna use and abuse that tool very, very much. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use that Chroma Warp tool in DaVinci Resolve. I'm in love with that tool. I'm going to use and abuse it from now on on my day-to-day -day grading, for sure. Once Resolve 20 beta is out of beta basically which could be in a couple months but yeah subscribe to the channel to not miss the future videos click the like button smash it comment down below let me know what you think of this new tool and how you 
think you're going to use that. I'm actually very curious about it. Follow me on Instagram and I will see you in the next video. Salut, prenez soin de vous.